want to shout on the clap of praise. Everybody, come on. It looks like, it looks like we're not excited to be here. It looks like this is not. If you believe that that's your prophecy. It's already speaking over whatever situation you came with. Now, in an attempt to show the devil that God is triumphing over him for your sake today, I want you to give God 60 seconds of a shout and a clap of praise for him. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout with a voice of triumph. I want to welcome you to the first miracle service of 2021. Amen. Are we ready tonight? This night is going to be very instructive. There are things I'm going to ask us to do. And I want us to do it and comply in faith. And watch God open to us a door of explosive miracles, signs, and wonders. How many of you are set for what God will do today? Those outside, can you shout a big amen? Those outside, please intimidate those that are inside. Shout a loud amen. Oh, are yeah, you now inside? Intimidate those outside. Shout amen. Challenge or whatever burden you came with, I give you the next 60 seconds. Lift it up to God and say, Father, it must leave my life this evening. Open your mouth and pray. Come on, those outside, make sure you are praying. Lord, this challenge must go today. This situation must end today. Those of you inside, are you praying? Lift your voice and pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. If you have an expectation, open your mouth and pray. He has not called the sons of Jacob to seek him in vain. go, that challenge must be lifted. For it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall be lifted from your shoulder, and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Come on, pray, come on, pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. One more prayer before we sit down. Listen to me. There are three kinds of people that come for meetings like this. Now, the way you pray... This next prayer point will tell me which category you fall into. There are three kinds of people that come to meetings like this. Firstly, there are those who came to see. They just came to watch what will happen. 
probably to see the man of God and what he can do. Or maybe to just see people receive their miracles. There are those who come just to mark attendance. Let it be that I came. Maybe to favor somebody. But then there are a group of people who came because they know that they serve a God that is alive. The Bible says he has not called the sons of Jacob to seek him in vain. The way you pray this next prayer will tell me the category you fall into. The prayer is, Lord, give me something today that I will remember for the rest of my life. Lift your voice and pray. If you know you didn't come to look at your neighbor or you didn't come just to mark attendance, those of you outside, pray. Distance is not a barrier. God can touch you wherever you are. God can reach you. Lift your voice and pray.
The sweetest name I know You're always the same is the sweetest name we know. You're always the same. Psalm 66. As your holy name, that is 
sensitive while I'm teaching the hand of God will just be falling on people at random God will just be visiting people at random there is a heavy atmosphere of the angelic in this place heavy atmosphere ensure that you are not distracted this night Psalm 66 verse 3 everywhere. The power of God is everywhere, both inside and outside. I'll try to just teach briefly and then we'll pray. I'm doing this so that I can just build our faith. Because faith remains the only currency with which you can transact in the heavenlies. Some of us, we came here expecting, but your faith is not up to your expectation. So I want to take the next few minutes to just build your faith. Because God is said to meet us according to the point of our expectations tonight. Amen. Did I ask you to write anything like a prayer point? Did I make mention of that? Did I say anything like that? All right. Get them ready. We are going to pray. Psalm 66. I sense a very, very heavy, heavy atmosphere of the power of God. Lord, we give you glory. Psalm 66, verse 3. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. Can we read the last two sentences, the last two lines, verse 3, at the count of three? One, two, three. Through the greatness of your power. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Oh, Rabaha. 
Asiba halataba. Siba raba hakabande ba brando siba hakrende kiba. Siba raba. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fair, more fair than the lily that grows by the way. Then the name of Jesus, no other name. Then the name of the Lord. I'm singing because God is visiting a family right now. Now, now, I'm in the spirit realm and I see the hand of God visiting a family now. No other name. Then the name Kaprasko Talabangi Ata of Jesus is worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of power. Sing this song.
is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. There are certain situations, certain problems, certain challenges in the life of an individual that sometimes seem unmovable. For some of us, it looks like God has visited every area of your life, but there is this one challenge that refuses to go. Some of us may have achieved victory in different areas of our lives, but there are certain situations that seem like they will never move. And most times this situation, while they last, seem to begin to mock the presence and the power of God in your life. Seems to begin to mock your faith. At some point, you may not have an answer to why this thing will not move. There are certain, I call them the bots of this life. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, he spoke about a man. The Bible described him as a mighty man. He was Naaman. And he won many battles for the king of Syria. But he was a leper. There are certain problems in the lives of people that year in, year out, refuse to go. It looks like the challenge or the problem keeps growing. Those are the bots that a lot of us are facing. The Bible spoke of Anna. After everything, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, he said, but she was buried. In Luke chapter 1, the Bible spoke about a couple, Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. When you read from verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, it gave us the, their background, where they were from, and how that they were priests. The Bible was even careful to mention that they were righteous before God. They were blameless. So sometimes the reason why the challenges will not go is not because really of a sin. I know that sin has its place in hindering the flow of God's power. But sometimes the devil makes us feel guilty or makes us begin to blame ourselves as though we are responsible for why certain things seem to remain in our lives. The Bible said this couple were righteous. Everything was perfect about them and they were priests, but they had no children. And some of these situations, it will take the raw, undiluted move of God's power to remove it. There are certain situations where, and like we are seeing today, it will not just take a measure of the power of God, but an extreme measure. The Bible calls it the greatness of his power. In Psalm 66, where we read, it says, through the greatness of your power, not just your power, the greatness of your power. In other words, God, if I need you to come in this situation, I don't need you to just come. I need you to come in the fullness of your might. The Bible says when that greatness of his power is revealed, the enemies will submit. In other words, these challenges or situations are orchestrated by unseen enemies. And if you know one thing for sure is this, that if you don't know who you are fighting, or if you don't know you have an enemy, then get ready for a lot of issues. Anything that you don't know is, is above you. Anything that you seem not to understand or you cannot unravel remains above you. So the Bible says, through the greatness 
of your power shall your enemies submit themselves i'm here talking to a group of people who may have seen the hand of god in different areas of their lives i'm here talking to some of us wonderful saints love god with all our hearts and with passion but there are certain challenges in your life in your family you know, when i'm when i'm talking you don't even need to think to point them out for some of you it is in your marriage you have peace everywhere except your marriage it remains a prayer point for some of you no issue no child for some every other thing is good but they seem not to know why they cannot get a good job or for some they seem not to know why they cannot be promoted for some it's in their finances for some in their academics every one of us have areas of our lives where the challenges seems like a mountain it seems like a roadblock that 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 may not be removed and you desperately need the power of god not just his power the exceeding greatness like Ephesians said of course you know let me just explain some words in that Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 the bible says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power Paul was saying that the eyes of our understanding will be open and enlightened by revelation. That we will know the hope of his calling. His riches, the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints. And the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. In other words, faith is what activates the power of God. Now the Bible says the exceeding greatness of his power. The word exceeding there is the word hupabalo in the Greek. It means to go over and beyond. It means something that cannot be measured. Something that cannot be quantified. And if you really experience the power of God, if you have really experienced it, at some point you cannot quantify it. That's the reason why I know for sure that certain things that we walked in here with tonight, we are not going back with it. Every other thing, every challenge has an expiry date. Can be quantified, can be measured. But not the power of God. The Bible says the exceeding greatness of his power. The word greatness is from the word mega. And there were four words used there in that, script, in that verse to talk about power. In other words, Paul was talking about the fullness, the full measure. There are certain issues in our lives where we need God to come in the fullness of his power. I think there's a song like that. Come in, the full, in your fullness and power. Come in your own special. It happened with Moses. Moses, God sent him to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh and the message was, Let my Hebrews and uh, my people go. Moses went there with the sign that God gave him. His staff turned into a snake, swallowed the staff of, of the Egyptian, you know, magicians. And he thought after that, Pharaoh would just easily let them go. You see, 430 years of bondage was not just going to easily be removed let me tell you one thing about yokes and oppressions i believe when we start the series on warfare i will teach on it expressively the longer a challenge stays in your life the stronger that yoke becomes and the more impossible it is for it to be broken because satan's satan's goal is to ensure it's not just to ensure that you are faced with an affliction or a predicament but that that affliction keeps you perpetually bound it doesn't mind transcending it from one generation after another that's what we call generational causes isn't it yeah that's how wicked he is so the longer the challenge stays the stronger the yoke it becomes and the more impossible at some point you will no longer have faith to believe that god can remove it how many of you have been there before ask the woman the shunammite woman the bible says when elisha told her you will have a child she turned back at him and said man of god please don't mock me upon all that she has heard about elisha upon his cv elisha was a prophet no not just in israel but even outside israel and here comes a man of god with this kind of grace telling you by this time next year you will have a child the woman said please don't mock me and when i studied and did my research i discovered that there was a link between that woman and the man that jesus met at the pool of bethsaida 
both of them were in captivity of a predicament that lasted 38 years historical perspective tells us that that woman had been childless for 38 years that that one is even more than abraham you can't believe god again at that point you will just decide it is the will of god don't accept every problem as the will of god no don't excuse every problem in your life that refuses to submit to the power of god or probably because it has not been faced with the grace that is equal to it don't excuse it to mean it's the will of god some of us satan has craftily deceived us to think it is the will of god just like for some of us here in fact a lot of christians they feel it's the will of god for them to be poor there are some christians who feel that it is spiritual when they are poor that's the reason why when you check their lineage poverty keeps transcending from one generation to another because to them spirituality is poverty no way no way the bible says in psalms 1 1 2 verse 3 wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever being poor will not does not guarantee you going to heaven there are poor people who don't go to church and there are some poor people that will end up in hell i hope you know and some of us will begin to excuse these things and feel it is the will of God for me to go through this. That was the reason why when Pharaoh refused after the sign that Moses showed him, Pharaoh refused. He said, in fact, increase their labor. Let them look for straw and make bricks. The Bible says when, when, when the leaders of the Hebrews came and met Moses, I thought they would celebrate Moses. I thought they would even encourage Moses that don't worry, we believe God is with you. They say, may God judge between you and us. They had become used to captivity 430 years imagine how many generations this is this is a case where somebody was a slave he died a slave his children were slaves they died slaves they are grand his grandchildren slaves to the fourth fifth generation so it has gone beyond just a one-time predicament it has it has it has diffused into the dna to the mind of the people that we are meant to be slaves so when freedom came knocking at their door where they were not ready they looked at the man that god has sent to them and said may god judge between you and us and god called moses when moses was frustrated by that act in exodus 6 verse 1 god told him he said no moses even though i told you that you would take them out of egypt you don't understand the formula don't think pharaoh will easily let you go i hope you know pharaoh was a wizard pharaoh was not just a king let me tell you how pharaohs were made in those days in ancient culture right from when you are a child they'll begin to teach you the mystics the arts of sorcery and magic in egypt egypt in those days had about one thousand gods and every son of the pharaoh must master the art of sorcery for each of these gods that's why the bible says he was a man mighty in words and deeds that he was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians the wisdom of the egyptians was sorcery and then when the, when the son had fully grown the last test before he becomes a pharaoh is that they will take him to the graves of the departed pharaohs and he will sleep there three days and three nights no food no water come out a wizard Yet, when you tell believers fast, is a problem. When you tell them pray, Jesus told his disciples, said, couldn't you watch for one hour? The Bible says, is there any among you afflicted? It didn't say let him cry. It didn't say let him sleep and wish that his deliverance will come. It didn't say let him sow seed. So he said it's good. It didn't say let him, he said let him what? Pray. That was how they graced pharaohs in those days. And Ramses had been raised in that way. In fact, the Bible told us, if you read Ezekiel chapter 22 and chapter 32, verse 3, both, both chapters, the Bible, called, the Bible said he sourced his power from a monster that was under the river. Let me tell you the truth. When you see a man rise to oppose God's people in the physical, and it seems like he's prospering, don't just look at him as an ordinary man. There is a spirit backing him up. For every level of physical challenge or affliction, there is a supernatural force behind it. The Bible says he sourced his power from the, the, the serpent that was under the Nile. That was why with all the plagues, Pharaoh refused. God told Moses in Exodus chapter 6 verse 1, he said, 
It is with a, a, a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. In other words, this thing will not just happen because your, your staff turned to a snake. It will not just happen because the river Nile turned to blood. Pharaoh will have to see my mighty power displayed. God himself quantified his power by putting might. That's the reason why certain things, you discover that sometimes when they pray for you, certain challenges will go, but certain challenges will remain. It's because there are some issues that will, it takes the heavy weight of God's power to undo it. Probably because of how long it has been. In fact, sometimes there are some sickness some people experience that is demonic. I'm telling you. The Bible says Jesus met a woman in the temple that she had been bound by a devil for 18 years. You would just think that she had a backache. And then medical people will give all kinds of names that they can give. But the Bible said it was a devil sitting on that back. Most times I've had the privilege of ministering to people and you don't want to know the kind of things I see. The person will tell you, this leg has been, it pains me every hamatan. Check very well, every hamatan there's a spirit that comes and resides there. Afflictions don't just happen. As I'm talking, I'm speaking to some people. There are certain afflictions in your family. Why will you come into a family? The father has diabetes. The grandfather died of diabetes. Your sisters now too have diabetes. Your mother has high blood pressure. There is a spirit of infirmity in that family. It's not just be healed. There is a demon that must be casted out. And there are certain demons that the Bible calls strong men. Those ones will not just go. They need to see the weight of God's power revealed. And the Bible says in Exodus 15, after all had been said and done, and the Egyptians perished in the sea, that was when Moses understood the technology of all that God was doing. In verse 7, he says, Your right hand, O God, is glorious in power. Your right hand is not just power. It is glorious. And I told, I taught you last year, I told you that the word glory means fullness. It means heavy weight. In other words, your right hand is the expression of power itself. Why do you think he told him, take your rod in your hand and stretch it on the sea? As Moses stretched his right hand with the rod, it was the hand of God that was released. Because that's how miracles happen. Most times God will make you perform certain acts in the physical. And you don't have the eye spiritually to see that his hand is released when you perform those acts. Through the, the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves what happens when the greatness of his power is revealed very quickly and then we'll pray number one the enemy is totally defeated the enemy is totally defeated and subdued the enemy is totally defeated and subdued The enemy is totally defeated and subdued. Our text told us, it said, Through the greatness of your power shall the enemy submit themselves. Sometimes we win a battle and think we have won the war. Listen very carefully. Sometimes in our conflict against the kingdom of darkness, we win one battle and we think we have won the war. Just the same way sometimes you lose one battle and you think you have lost the war. No. The fact that you have lost one battle does not mean the war is over. So in other words, the fact that you've won one battle does not mean the war is over. Welcome, sir. Doesn't mean that the war is over. So that's the reason why certain people, especially if you find someone who is demonized, heavily demonized, <laughs> you need a lot of discernment to know when all the demons have left. It's not just when the person falls down. You need a lot of discernment. Sometimes they can fall and the demons that are coming out are the small, small ones. The strong man is still seated there. And the Bible says when a, an, evil, an unclean spirit is casted out, he will go through dry places seeking rest and he finds none. Then he will say to himself, I will go back to my house and check. He's a believer, he's calling his house. 
Because when you cast out a demon from a person, that person becomes empty for the Holy Ghost to fill. Automatically becomes a believer. Now the demon calls that believer his house. He said, I will go back and check. And the Bible says when he returns and find that the house is swept and kept clean. In other words, that is a nominal Christian. A nominal believer. They just go to church and come back. No fire. No prayer life. No word of God. No scripture. No time for God. No passion in their dedication to the things of God. You are, if you are like that, you are of that case. Some believers that will not remember when last they prayed. The Bible says, when he comes and finds the house swept clean, he will go back. Because Satan's goal is yoke and bondage. Every challenge that he throws at an individual, his goal is to bring it to a point of yoke and bondage. And if possible, enslave the entire generations. Why? So that he can reign supreme. Because when, when you see a person who is lame, God is not glorified like that. It is the devil that is glorified. Every time you see a predicament in the life of a person continues. What is the person who is being glorified is Satan. The Bible says the demon will go back, take seven other demons, more stronger than him, and enter into that man. And the Bible says that the, the state of that man will be worse than the first. And there are, there are, there are individuals, there are families who, whose story is like that. But we are talking about the heavy weight of God's power revealed so that the enemy is totally crushed, vanquished, and defeated. Give me Psalms 18. Let me show you something. Verse 37. Let me give you a picture of how that can happen in the life of an individual. Psalms 18, 37. Totally defeated. He said, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. Verse 38, we are reading to 42. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. I wish, I, I pray this is somebody's answer in the name of Jesus. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. 39, for you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. 40, you have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. 41, they cried out but there was none to save them. Even to the Lord but he did not answer them. So they can even cry to God. Yes. Did your Bible, is he not reading in your Bible? Satan went to God on behalf of Job. Hmm. See, let me tell you something. There are two ways by which Satan can, can I say this? Good. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. Meaning that whatever he does to a believer he did it because he had the right or he had the reason a believer is so fortified that satan will have to negotiate certain legal terms to gain access into that believer if he doesn't have the right to attack that believer because he doesn't have the right why because the bible says that jesus is the head of the church and he says that God has put all things under Jesus' feet. The feet of Jesus is his church, you and I. So if everything, all of the power of darkness is under the feet of Jesus, it means they are under us. The Bible says, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of your enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Satan may not have the right because he knows he has been legally defeated, but he may have a reason. Maybe a reason of prayerlessness. Maybe a reason of disobedience. Maybe a reason of sin. A reason, whatever it is, he could negotiate that and legally enter the life of a believer and wreak havoc. But look at this scripture that we read. Put it for us. The last verse we just read. It says, they, they were under my feet. Right? They cried out, but there was none to save. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Just the same way Satan went to God and was initiating so that God can allow him to penetrate Job's life. The Bible says God did not answer him. Give us verse 42, the last verse, and then we'll move from here. 
Then I beat them down. I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. And I cast them out like dead in the street. The enemy is totally defeated. Totally subdued. Totally subdued. Number two. When the greatness of his power is revealed, the sentence of death is revoked. The sentence of death is revoked. Psalm 79 verse 11. The sentence of death is revoked. <laughs> Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power. Do what? Preserve those who are appointed to die. According to the greatness of your power. Meaning that there are people who Satan has concluded on them. While men slept, he has sown all manner of seeds. He has successfully captured their demise and their defeat. But here is a prayer from the psalmist. He says, according to the greatness. In other words, the only way this sentence of death can be revoked and upturned is when your, the greatness of your power is revealed. When it happens like that, it says you will preserve those who are appointed. I'm not trying to put fear in some of us, but there are some of us here seated right now. The sentence of death is already on your head this year. You escaped last year, but this year, Satan said no way. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are already seeing dreams. Some of you sickness here and there. Some of you it has been concluded in the coven that by April 1, you should have gone. The Bible says it is by the greatness of his power. All of a sudden, those who have been concluded for death, there can be a turn in the table. In Ezekiel 21, he says, I will overturn 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 three times see there are some plots that god must overturn this night for you i'm telling you luke chapter 7 if you read from verse 11 to 15 the bible spoke about a very wonderful scenario every time i read that part of the bible it triggers a hunger in me for the supernatural the bible says jesus was going to a city called name how can you call a city name n-a-i-n name Nain is the same thing as Nain. No. A city of nothing. And the Bible says, and you know Jesus, he's a man of crowd. He was going with his disciples and crowd were following him. And of course, you can't be around Jesus and not be happy. He's called the Prince of Peace. Everyone who was sick around him was healed. Everyone who was afflicted was delivered. So you can imagine a, a crowd joyfully celebrating as they followed him into a city. And then opposite them, coming out of the city, there was a funeral procession. The Bible says a widow whose only son just died. She was being escorted. And sometimes when I tell this story, some of us laugh over it. I say, you know, you know when somebody dies, I'm discovering these days and we need, to, we need to change it. It looks like culture celebrates funeral more than weddings. When was the last time you attended a funeral? Okay, not the funeral in the north here. Yeah, I think... The ones they do here is just very quick. Go to the south and attend funeral. Go to Igbo land. Or go to Benue State, Idoma land. People that are poor, where they will get the money for to sponsor that burial, only God knows. A Christian burial, while they are coming out of church singing hymns, they are already loading crates of stars somewhere. So when we finish with church, when we finish with God, we will go for this one. And for, it's so funny because I've been there before. The moment the, the, the casket is going to the ground, you hear all kinds of cry, <laughs> including people who have a bottle of star in front of them, they begin to cry. The moment they cover that grave, that's the end. They go back and begin to dance and celebrate. That's an anomaly we must correct. Why will you celebrate somebody when, he was, when, when he's dead? All those things you are bringing, why did you not bring it when the person was alive? The Bible says such was this procession coming out of the city. This widow had no husband. Of course, the Bible says she was a widow. She had no child. Her only hope was dead. Probably this was the son that would have grown up to take away poverty and shame from her life. Probably this was the son that would grow up to take away hardship and affliction. 
All her life she invested in this young man. He went through primary school painfully. It wasn't easy for her. She had to beg to send him through secondary school. And now he has finished university only for him to have an accident and die. And she was burying her hope coming out of the city. The Bible says they met the wrong crowd. Jesus of Nazareth. In this context, they met the wrong crowd. Of course, darkness was already celebrating. Because I hope you know, as at that time, Jesus had not died. So everyone who died on earth went down to hell. Though there was a compartment for the righteous and there was a compartment for the unrighteous. But Satan and death ruled above all who were on, in hell. The Bible called their souls as being souls in prison. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. I'm sure Satan was already rejoicing. Another prisoner was coming. But Jesus showed up. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is showing up for you. Jesus is showing up for you. Come on, say it with all faith inside of you. Jesus is showing up for you. Jesus is showing up for you. The Bible says Jesus walked to the casket. If I was Jesus, that's the time to do as if you didn't see them. Pass. If it was a headache or one thing or the other hand. But this one is a casket. Just pass like that. Do as if you didn't see them. Share tracts or be discussing with people. The Bible says Jesus walked straight to the casket. You know why? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, if you go through any predicament, it's because I have not shown up. He told Martha, I say, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know on the last day, Jesus said, who, who taught you eschatology? That last day is a person. I am the resurrection. It's not a day, it's a person. Some of you are Satan has deceived you to think in the sweet by and by. One faithful day. Do you know when I hear Christians use that word faithful as in F-A-T-E-F-U-L. It just tells you how they are backslided. Because I don't believe in faith. F-A-T-E. There's nothing like that. There is nothing like that. Somebody say I was waiting on my faith. Are you kidding me? Didn't the Bible say all things work together for good for them that love the Lord? Just the same way there's nothing like coincidence. If I was blessed this evening, I knew I was going to be blessed. It was not a coincidence. If God sent a, a, a wealthy person to favor me, I knew I would be favored. It's not a coincidence. And just so you know that it's not a coincidence, it can happen again, again, and again. A Christian will say, I'm waiting for my faith. Oh my God. You see, and sometimes you don't blame them. When, when, when somebody has gone through a challenge for 13 years, 20 years, 30 years, Jesus walked straight to the coffin. He touched it and they stopped. And he said, young man, arise. And all of a sudden, a burial was changed. Imagine all the rice that they had cooked waiting to come back and pounce on. Probably it was a culture where they were going back to share the guy's property and leave the woman with nothing. But Jesus said, sorry, it won't happen today. Better luck next time. I think if there's anybody who needs luck, it's the devil. Not, not believers. Because there's nothing like luck. So you can wish him luck. You understand? You can wish the devil luck. Say devil, hey, yeah. Better luck next time. You came late today. Because you know there's nothing like luck. Did you understand what I said? Yes, sir. <laughs> the sentence of death is revoked. The Bible says in Psalms 107 verse 20, He sent forth His word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Number three. Restoration becomes imminent. When the greatness of his power is revealed, restoration becomes imminent. In Luke chapter 11 verse 21 and 22, Jesus said, Except you bind a strong man, you cannot spoil the goods of his house. He said, A strong man guards his goods well. But when, a, when he that is stronger than he comes and binds him, give us verse 22. He said, but when a stronger than he comes, right? 
When a stronger than him comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor, first of all. First of all. Now listen to this first. Every time Satan is bound in your life, the first thing that must happen is that the weapon with which he used to secure that bondage on your life is taken from him. That's what the Bible says. He takes from him all his armor. For some of you, the armor of depression is what the enemy used. In fact, there are many of you here. You are used to receiving the lies that the enemy pumps in your head. Let me warn you, not every thought that comes to your mind is from God. Do you know there are some thoughts that are projected by the devil? You just stay and begin. To, how, how many of has it happened to you before you wake up one morning and for no reason you feel bad? Some of you will even go on WhatsApp and put it as your status there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> even if you are feeling bad, close your mouth. The Bible says, though the fig tree does not, does not blossom, it said, though the stalls are empty, it said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and glory, joy in the God of my salvation. Who told you you should move by your feelings? God does not walk by feelings. God walks by faith. Your feelings can hear you. They can hear your voice. You can command them to be stable. Just the same way Jesus stepped on water and commanded the winds to be still. For some of you, the armor of depression. For some of you, the armor of frustration. All kinds of armor. The Bible says the first thing he would take is his armor. And then, in which he trusted and divides his, his spoil. Every time God delivers a man from a bondage, from a yoke, the first thing that happens is that restoration comes. Because every time Satan comes into the life of a man, he steals first. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill. Satan does not step into your life without stealing. He must steal something. For some of you, you stole your joy from the beginning of this year. You are just managing through the year. Some of you, the last time you were joyful was 31st December. And let me tell you the truth. The moment Satan steals your joy, you are, you are more or less dead. You are more or less dead. Anything can be missing in my life, even including my money. And at some point, my time too, but not my joy. Can I tell you why? The Bible says it is with joy that you will draw waters from the well of salvation. With joy, you can recover what is stolen. He said, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Joy is the character for you to use to come into a harvest. It's not just feeling excitement, excited rather. When you are joyful, it is a license for God to restore what was stolen. It's almost as if God cannot do anything except he sees joy inside of you. That's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. For some of you, he stole your peace. For some of you, you can't sleep. Once it's night, you, you are troubled. For some of you, he stole money from you. For some of you, he stole a promotion from you. You have been in a position for long. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have even sown seed. Nothing has happened. And now you are already giving up. The Bible says, when the strong man is overpowered, all his goods are spoiled. Restoration becomes imminent. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, the Bible speaks in 17 of that chapter down to 20. When David had pursued the Amalekites, the Bible says he defeated them and he recovered all. All. Why? God told him, pursue, overtake, and recover. Not just some. All. Some of you, what you need this night is restoration. There are some of your stuff that is still in the warehouses of demons. There are some of your stuff that is still in demonic banks, satanic banks. And we must clear those banks and restore you completely today. If you are like that, say amen. amen. Yeah. Some of you don't know that there are demonic banks. There are satanic warehouses. Isaiah 45 verse 3. It says, and I will give unto him the treasures of darkness. When Satan steals from people, he knows, he has where he hides those things. Your joy is somewhere. Your peace is somewhere. Your finance is somewhere. Your husband is somewhere. Huh? You watch the, the playlet. Everything Satan has stolen from you is somewhere. But it takes the power of God to invade those banks. Have you ever seen a robbery in a bank before? 
It cannot happen except there is an insider. Because there is a place they call a safe. No matter what you do, shoot all your, your bullets. You can't penetrate there. You need somebody who has access. Who has the codes. And the one who has the codes and the access to where everything that was stolen from you is hidden is Jesus himself. He said, behold, I am he who was, who was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death. Some of you are family members belonging to you that have been hidden in those places. How do I know? They fall sick up and down. They have been caged. Some of them are prisoners. But the Bible says the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Restoration is imminent. Restoration is imminent. The Bible says in Joel, this is the technology for how God restores. Listen to this. The greatest thing that Satan will steal from a man is time. Listen. Everything that Satan takes from you, he takes it in reference to the value of time, of your time that that thing possesses. If Satan takes your money, he took your time in a way. This is how it happens. Some of you, everything about you is fine till you collect your salary. And the moment you collect that salary, you don't know how you spend it. And then just, this is just first week of a new month. You have spent everything in your account. By the middle of the month, you begin to borrow again. And you are too ashamed to tell people how much your salary is. 100,000, 200,000. There are some people who, there's an adage, they say you walk like an elephant and eat like an ant. Everything that Satan takes from a man, he takes it with the unit of time. But the Bible says, I will restore to you the years. Joel 2.25. I thought he would say, I will restore to you the corn. Or the money. He said that the years, your time, your time, your time. Prolonged affliction is your time being sapped out. Probably Satan has a, an agenda to ensure you are cut off from, by 50 years as a woman. Or maybe you have only 50 years in God's plan to fulfill your assignment as a woman. And by 35, you are not married. By 40, you are not married. What is he eating? Time. It's not husband he's taking. It's time. He's taking from you. Because as long as that affliction continues, you will forget about anything purpose and begin to be worried about that affliction. And you can spend the next five years. By the time you know what's happening, you are 45 years. Let's say God intervenes and a man walks in and you get married. That's when you now want to start fulfilling God's purpose. Five years later, you are gone. Did Satan succeed? Yes. Unfortunately. You see, believers, we need to be intelligent. We need to be intelligent when we are faced by, by, the, by, by, by the weapons of darkness. We need spiritual intelligence to discern why this attack, what is it targeting? As a pastor, as a man of God, Satan can steal your time by afflicting your members. <laughs> so instead of you to use that time to pray and study and gather bread for God's people, you will be spending time fasting and praying. And sometimes, especially if it is a work of witchcraft, witchcraft tries, or occultism tries, by hiding from the individual the source of that problem. That's why darkness is their, is their flag. Did you understand what I just said? Some of you don't know why everything with the devil is attached to darkness. In darkness, you cannot see. Satan's strength over you is your ignorance. He can hide the source of that problem for 20 years. And you'll be fighting the wrong things. But this evening, light is coming to somebody. Some of you, before the end of this service, your eyes will literally be open to see what the enemy was after. And let me tell you one thing with the enemy. The moment he knows that you are aware, deliverance is easy. At that point, you can say, get out in the name of Jesus, and that's it. Restoration. And I like the way he put it. He said, if you read from verse 23, he said, I will cause the rain to come upon you. What is the rain? He said, the former, listen to this, the former and the latter rain 
will come in the same month. Of course, you know that's impossible. What it means is, instead of you to sow now and wait for harvest, I'm going to combine and collapse the season so that as you sow now, you are reaping. Did not Jesus say, don't say four months and then comes the harvest. He said, but behold, look, the fields are white with harvest. That was the revelation Jesus was talking about. That in God, there's nothing like wait. He created time. He can compress time for your sake. He can compress 10 years in three months. He can compress nine months in one day. I'm not just telling you scriptures. I've seen God do it. You waited for 10 years, no child. The next four years, God will bless you with four children. How? First issue, twins. One year later, second issue, twins. Then two of you will go for family planning. Quickly. Before you give back to a community. You graduated. Served. Even did your master's. No job. For five years. Wait. He says, I will restore. One job can pay you for that five years. Starting salary, 750000 What are you talking about? In six months, you buy the car that you, you would have used five, five years to. That's why God, is not, God seems not to be perturbed when the enemy is ravaging among his people. Because he is Lord over all. He knows that when it's time, he can step in and change the equation. Look at what happened. Jesus told his disciples, he said, Take, enter the boat, cross over to the other side. And it looks like he was delayed. The night was going and these guys had already gone. Jesus was praying. And then when he finished praying, Jesus stepped out of prayers. And he walked on water. Read your Bible, John chapter 6. If you read John's account of that, of that story, the Bible says that they saw Jesus walking towards them. Excuse me, what is English language? Towards means he was walking, coming from the opposite side. In other words, while they were still at the middle of the sea, Jesus had gone to the other side and he came back to meet them. When the Lord of hosts is with you, I'm telling you, restoration becomes the normal thing in your life. I'm telling you. Somebody say, Pastor, you are talking good, <laughs> but this thing is almost impossible. Watch in the next few minutes. Number four, resurrection and the rise of a new era. When the greatness of his power is displayed. Resurrection and the rise of a new era. Psalms 126 verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like what? Them that dreamed. In other words, it was too good. It looked like a dream. I never thought it would happen like this. I think there's an old song they used to sing like that. I never knew you will favor me this day. No, you don't need to use the word honor. You can put what you want there. That's why I like those kind of songs. You put what you want and prophesy to yourself. That's why I like all those Igbo songs. All those Igbo high praise. Those ones that before they start, they will prophesy before they, they start. I like those songs. I never knew he will favor me this day. I never knew he will favor me this day. I never knew he will favor me this day. Favor me this day. You want to dance? Okay, don't worry. We'll dance very soon. Listen, just like as I'm talking here, before somebody leaves this place, you will get an alert on a Sunday that you have never seen. It will happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You ask yourself, do people go to bank on Sundays? Watch. Just like you wake up by 2 a.m. and somebody is sending you money by 2 a.m. Brother, there's something called favor. If favor is working for you, I'm telling you, men will be like robots. Somebody will go to sleep and all he's seen in the dream is you. Wake up from that dream. Take his phone. When he has transferred the money, that's when he will get his senses. <laughs> have you ever given to some people and when they have gone, that's why... What did I just do, Joe? I would have given him 5,000, not 30,000. Check very well. That person probably pressed the button of favor before coming. 
resurrection. In other words, dead things can come back to life. And then lastly, vengeance is proclaimed. <laughs> Some of you don't like this one, but vengeance is proclaimed. Psalm 79, 11 and 12. Vengeance. Some of you don't know that one of his name, one of God's names is God of vengeance. I will show you. I will show you. In fact, some of you, that's the dimension of God you need. There's somebody, what you are going through now is somebody, a human being like you, that is orchestrating it. And except the Lord of hosts arise. That's why he said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Look at this. He said, let the groaning of the prisoner come before you. That looks like the situation of somebody watching me now or looking at me. Let the groaning of the prisoner. Have you prayed to a point where there are no words to express your affliction? You begin to groan. That was what Anna did in Shiloh. The Bible says she was praying and her mouth was moving, but nobody could hear, hear what she was saying. Brother, there are some kind of problems that can so stay in your life, you will not know when you start praying like that. He said, Let the groaning, it's a prayer. Let the prayer of a prisoner come before you. And according to the greatness of your power, meaning that when that groaning comes before God, he hears. I think there's a place in Isaiah 42 where he says that God will shake himself. He will arise and shake himself like a mighty man. If God, if God seems to be sleeping for some of you, he's waking up this evening, I'm telling you. Leave the scripture there. The Bible spoke about Jesus being in the boat, sleeping. When the storm was ravaging the disciples. And then they went to him and said, Master, carest not thou that we perish. We are dying and you are sleeping. And the Bible says, Jesus woke up stretched. And he rebuked the wind. And the wind was calm. And if I was Jesus, I will go back and sleep again. And according to the greatness of your power, preserve those who are appointed to die. Verse 12. We'll read this and then one more scripture and then we'll pray. And return. Can you read together the count of three? Inside and outside. One, two, three. And return to our neighbors. Sevenfold. Now, let me correct some people's mentality. I know there are some of you who look at me, you think life is a roller coaster, ice cream, banana, double decker. You are so nice to everybody. You have not read the Bible very well. The Bible says in Micah chapter 7, read from verse 5 to verse 8. The Bible says, a man's enemies are those of his household. I'm not saying suspect everybody, but some of you are going through stuff that is an uncle in the village that has been manipulating you. You don't know. Some of you don't believe in witchcraft. And when I look at your life, I don't need to look twice. I know that what you are going through is pure witchcraft. They have signed their signature on your destiny. Some of you, I feel some of you are too nice. You are too nice to people. Jesus said, be harmless as a dove, but be wise as serpents. Let me give you one of the wisdom of a serpent. When a serpent is moving, he moves with the readiness to strike. Is that true? Yeah. When a serpent is moving, he moves with the readiness. He knows that he is a predator. So because of that, he has many people against him. So he is watching. In fact, there is a, there is a particular kind of king cobra. According to the, the, the story, that cobra has eyes in front and in back. When he stands like this, you think he's seen 180, he's seen 360. And the Bible says, be wise as who? As serpents. He said, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. Some of you are too nice to... Some of, some of the people who are, you have been nice to are, are, are those who in the night will bring out a pot from under their bed and will be calling your name. Today, any enchantment that has been spoken over you, I reverse that enchantment and I command the earth to bury those people. Yeah. Psalms 94. Let me show you something. Something. Now, sometimes when I pray warfare, spiritual warfare, you see, when, read your Bible well. Oh, there are some scriptures you will need. 
when you are when you are engaging spiritual warfare, there are some scriptures you need. You don't need Jesus the Lamb that time. No. Is it not in Revelation that the Bible says he, 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 he will smite the nations with an iron rod? He was repeating what Sam said. Speaking of Jesus. And when Jesus is coming back, he's not coming peacefully. He's coming to bring judgment. I hope you know. Because the second coming of Jesus is different from the rapture. I hope you know. So if you don't know, meet us in Numatec. We'll be teaching that this year. Read together on the screen. One to go. O oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O oh God, to whom vengeance belongs. How many times? Twice. And the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a word is what? So, so that you will know that it's not by mistake. To whom vengeance belongs. Some of you, that's the prayer you will pray this night. Too. Vengeance for your family. Vengeance for your career. Hiya. I traveled to Abuja one time. I went to a house. And they said I should pray. I closed my eyes to pray and I saw somebody's certificate. I saw an NYC certificate. Buried in a dirty pot. I say, come. <laughs> and the person was standing there looking at me. Graduate. You know, sometimes we are too carnal about life. That's why some things will hit us. And by the time you realize it was the devil, you have spent many years. Now, those years you have spent, I know God will restore. But those years you have spent, there are some opportunity of a lifetime that would have met you within those years if your certificate had been loose to take you to where you should meet those opportunities. Did you get what I said? That's why you must fight delay. Delay is from the devil. Vengeance. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs. God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. To whom vengeance belongs. Some of you, every year, Satan comes to harvest people from your family. What I mean is people die. At least four people will die right now and it will happen at specific moments of the year right now you're already praying because you know between january february people die in my family i've seen a family where, where satan will come and eat everybody and leave the man and his wife people don't just die like that people are not just cut off in their prime just like that some of you, nobody has ever gone to school in your family. Now you are, you are the only, you are going to be the first graduate. You are in final year and a migraine is coming to you to, to ruin exams. No, it's not ordinary, sir. It's not ordinary. I watched a film one time and somebody went to consult a witch doctor for another person. The person that they were doing the consultation for was in Germany. And this person was in a village in Nigeria. And they did finished everything and left. Days later, the person was sitting down in front of a system in Germany to write an exam. And as soon as the system came on, what he saw was the native doctor's face. And the native doctor told him, your place is in the street. That's how the guy ran mad. And sometimes if God, if you don't, if, if the heaviness of the anointing does not come against those things, with Jesus on your lips, with Jesus on your lips. So when the greatness of his power is displayed, vengeance is proclaimed. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment condemn." Psalms 9 verse 16. He said the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. What is the judgment? Read the whole of the verse. He said the wicked are ensnared in the works of their hand. Meaning back to sender. God likes that kind of prayer. You don't know what that means? The Bible says the wicked is ensnared by the works of his hands. Psalm 7 verse 14 to 16. From 15 rather. He says that the net that they placed have cut their feet. And he that digged the pit has fallen thereon. Vengeance. Somebody say vengeance. vengeance. He says, Surely they shall gather, but not of me. Whoever gathers for your sake shall fall. He said, Behold, I've created the blacksmith that blows the coals of fire and the destroyer that wasted. Hey. But no weapon. No weapon. 
no weapon let me prophesy to you before we begin to pray now i decree and declare over anyone whose life is in job at the air anyone who is under the radar of the enemy here anyone who is almost being buried in a pit of affliction i declare that the god of sabbath will arise on your behalf and in his judgment let him attack your attackers pursue your pursuers waste your wasters in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray for one minute pray for one minute his enemies be scattered let those who hate him flee before him as wax is melted from the fire by the fire let those who hate the lord perish at his presence oh god to whom vengeance belongs Hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to this before we pray. I'm going to minister now. Listen. How do you activate this? That the greatness of his power is displayed. That the heavy weight of the anointing of God steps into your life. Then you need to believe the ministry of the prophetic. I taught you from the beginning of this year. I told you believe your prophets. The Bible says by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel. One man carried the investment of a nation. It's possible. It's possible. Some of you right now your deliverance from whatever you came here with. Is about to proceed to you by a word. But you need, you need to understand. You need to see. When God sends a man to you, take away his weakness, take away whatever you know about him, and see him as a prophet speaking God's words to you. Words are not just a medium for communication. In the spirit realm, words are conveyors. They are vehicles by which things are transported. Realities are transported by words. And the earth was without form and was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, and that was it. So this night when the word comes and says be healed, believe that you are healed. I'm telling you. Don't be like the Shunammite woman who Elisha told her by this time next year you will embrace a son. She said, man of God. Uh -uh. No be you are no. How about man of God? You guess, you are anointing her for small, small, small things but this one, leave me and my challenge. Are you kidding me? He says, believe in his prophets. Every time God will deliver a man, he sends a man. Every time God will restore a man, he sends a man. God will not come down on earth again. Why? Because he has kept men to do what he's supposed to do. There are two things that God will not do. Number one, what he has already done. And number two, what he has appointed a man to do. Most times when there was famine in Israel and they cried to God, God will not talk. He's a prophet that will talk. Did you read your Bible? God will not talk. For some of you, there are prayers you have prayed. It looks like God is not hearing you. No, sir. It's not like God is not hearing you. But he has already answered what you are praying. And I don't know about you, but you get offended when somebody comes to ask you for something you have already provided for him. When you go before God and you are crying deliverance. Oh God, deliver my family. Oh God, do this and that for me. Oh God, do this and that. Yes, God is hearing you, but God is saying, is there no prophet around there? Nobody that can speak by my authority and change this person's life. Psalm 74 verse 9. He said, we do not see our signs. He said, there is no prophet who will tell us how long the reproach of the enemy will last. You want to see the heavy weight of God's power? Believe the ministry of the prophetic. There are two dimensions of the prophetic and we'll see the two of them. Many of you are used to the revelatory aspect where I can see and say. But then there is a more powerful aspect. It's called the creative aspect. I don't need to see the situation and say. 
from here we can send the word and heal your mother who is at home from here we can send the word to your cousin in Lagos and that their story will change I'm telling you are we ready tonight this night listen If you live here without a miracle, we're about to pray. But if you live here without a miracle, I guarantee you it was not God's fault. I guarantee you it was not my fault. I guarantee you it is your fault. What I'm saying is I want you to believe God. Faith is a, is a currency with which we transact in the spirit realm. 500 naira can buy you airtime. 500 naira can buy you fruits, food to eat. But can 500 naira buy you an iPhone? If you take 500 naira and go to Bulukutu and you want to buy an iPhone, what would they do? You are a criminal, isn't it? Some people may actually be spiritual criminals. How? They, they, they want to use a faith that is not up to to buy something that is bigger than their faith. Do you understand me? We are going to pray, but I want you to understand. I, I did all I was doing to now because I wanted to build your faith to meet up with your expectation. If you, if you want to buy an iPhone, you should hold at least 150 or 200,000, isn't it? That's why this night as you pray, I want your faith to rise to a point where it is equal to your expectation. And within you, before the word comes, you know it's as good as done. Tell your neighbor, don't be a spiritual criminal this night. Oh. No. Don't, buy, don't try to buy what your faith cannot buy. Huh? Are we ready to pray? Lift your voice and just pray. In 60 seconds, open your mouth and just pray. Wherever you are. If you can pray in the spirit, go ahead and just blast in tongues.
before we minister. Yeah. Now, I will advise you to pray. Listen, some of you who know me, you know that one of the things that trigger the prophetic is prayers. Okay? Let me give you, let me teach you a secret. Listen, listen. Those of you outside, if you can hear me, say amen. Okay, there are no people outside? Okay. Listen. Let me give you a secret. Listen. Every time you raise your voice to pray, Especially when you are praying in the spirit. Listen to what happens. The Bible says when we pray, we speak mysteries. Most times, God will take your prayer and filter it to me in form of prophecy. Yeah. The answer. That's right. Most times. Most times. So when I tell you pray, don't look at your neighbor. Pray because you are desperate for a move of God That's in your right. life. Are we together? Woo. Listen to me. Exodus 15. Seven. We are going to pray this prayer. Please give me volume on this mic. Exodus 15, 7. Just this prayer and then I'll begin to minister and we'll be done for the night. Exodus 15, 7. Give it to us very quick. If it's not there, someone else will just read for us. Can we read together on the screen? One, two, go. And in the great best. Wait, give me in King James fashion. King James. Exodus 15 verse 7. Go to verse 6 first. There's a scripture I'm looking at. Hey, this is the scripture. Alright, let's read one to go. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, and dash in his name. Listen. You are going to pray the last prayer. Any challenge in your life that is sponsored by an enemy or that is related to the kingdom of darkness, let the right hand of God's power <laughs> execute judgment on your behalf. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Your right hand is glorious in power. Your right hand is glorious in power. Oh God, Oh, 
Minister, but let's pray. Let's pray. Listen, let me even just announce to you this season is a season of intense spiritual warfare. Are we together? So, they are, we are going to be doing making certain kinds of prayers that will cause certain shifts in our lives. Please listen. Job 5:12. The power of God is already everywhere, but listen, just pay me your attention. Job 5:12. Job 5.12. We are going to pray a prayer now. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Verse 13. Give us 13 and we'll be done. Listen. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. Please bring it down. God is telling me we should pray this. Some of you, there are agencies and orchestrations sponsoring what you are going through. I'm just hearing that in my ear. Before I begin to minister, there are certain, certain demonic agents that must fall down this night because of you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority. I take authority against every demonic agency. Against every demonic agency. Every satanic enterprise. Every satanic enterprise. Manipulating my destiny. Manipulating my destiny. Or is responsible for my predicament. Or is responsible for my predicament. Let them be disappointed. Let them be disappointed. Oh God of vengeance. Oh God of vengeance. Arise on my behalf. Arise on my behalf. Judge them. Judge them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Shabbat <laughs> shalom. 
symbols something's happening I'm seeing something close. God is asking me to do something very, very strange. Listen. 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 Please listen, except those who are under the anointing. God is saying, we are going to be very quick. When I do this, I'll pray for the sick. Then maybe we'll take testimonies and we'll be done. Amen. God is asking me to walk through the entire congregation and outside. Listen, please, listen. I'm going to do this. And as I do it, that cloud I saw is going to be visiting people. Listen to this. This move of his power now is going to be for those who are under any kind of demonic oppression. Some of you, the plot against you is coming from your village. In fact, while I was singing that, I literally saw myself in a village right now. Because of time, I can't describe what I saw. But with your eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands. No, no, don't lift your hands. Just listen. I will walk around and sing. I need just the cymbals and the, the strings. As I walk around, there is going to be a mighty move of the power of God. Ushers, please make sure you are on alert. Because I see, I see this place is about to get bizarre right now. Any kind of demonic oppression is falling down now. Father, as I walk through, let your mighty hand descend. Let your glory be revealed. Put an end to oppression. Let chains be broken. Let burdens be lifted. My God, I see the hand of God already. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Eyes closed. You are Jehovah close everywhere. You are Jehovah. Father, your glory all over this crowd, inside and outside. You are the mighty man of battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty one of war. You are Jehovah. Those of you in front here, yeah, lift your hands where the camera is. All of you here, lift your hands. 
Father, I'm stretching my right hand. Your right hand is glorious in power. Anyone that is under any form of demonic oppression, every chain of darkness, as I count to seven, Holy Ghost, find them out. Command deliverance to your people. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now seven. I speak deliverance. Way to the back. Way to the back. Way to the back. Way to the back. Let those chains be broken. Let those chains be broken. I command the fire of God now. I command the fire of God now. Oppression be lifted now. Oppression be lifted now. of you at the back, lift your hands. Mighty warrior, I see seven people. Give me space here. Great in battle, Jehovah is. God is asking me to sing this song. And I see seven people that will come mightily under the anointing. In fact, some of them, there will be a loud shout. Please lift your hands, all of you at the back, eyes closed. Jehovah is your name. Father, find them now. Jehovah is your name. Ushers, please be careful with them. I see one. Jehovah is touch now, touch now, touch now, touch now, touch now. Let the right hand of God's power descend. Touch now, all over the back. Touch now, touch now. God is.
guys better be very sensitive tonight. Is there anybody born on March 5th? March. Seen something around 5th? 5th March. Or just generally 5th? All of you here, please lift your hands. Eyes closed. Those of you at the door, the Lord is asking me to stretch my hand. I see the power of God coming. Father, from my left to my right, be calm. Be calm now. Be calm. From my left to my right, a touch of your glory. A touch of your power like no other. Set men free. Liberate destinies. Let the weight of your glory descend upon them. Activate destinies now. I'm hearing breakthrough in my ear. Those of you that are around here, I see a few persons that God is bringing into seasons of breakthrough. Lord, as I lift my right hand, let there be a mighty surge of your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Right now, from my left or my right, Holy Ghost, touch them. Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost, move. I stretch my hands. Let the right hand of God that is glorious with power descend. Holy Ghost, move all over this place. All over this place. All over this place, my God. All over this place. All over this place now. All over this place. All over this place now. the weight of the power of God descend. Break limitations. Destroy chains. Activate destinies now. 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 Faithfulness, oh Lord, is touching you now. Hey, is thy faith? sick I'm going to pray right now I'm going to pray for the sick now some of you have no idea what has just happened I'm telling you some of you have no idea what has happened you will leave this place and certain predicaments in your families in your lives you will not seem to find them again I'm telling you 
If you are sick, please lay your hands wherever the pain or the affliction is. If it's a delicate part, just lift your right hand. If it's a delicate part you can't touch because it's in public, lift your right hand. Or if it's all over your body, lift your right hand. But if you are sick, place your hand wherever the pain or the affliction is. I'm about to pray. I'm seeing the number seven. 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 And I'm trying to know from God what that means. Seven. It's either you were born on the seventh month or on the seventh day. Where are you? Please come. I want to pray. It's either you were born on the seventh month or the seventh day. Now there are two of you I'll pray for. Out of all of them, there are just two I'll pray for. It's either you were born on the seventh month or the seventh day. I want to pray. Please, those of you that are sick right now, I'm about to pray. God is going to heal you. Just be patient. Make sure you are standing everywhere. Please, soft, soft. Wow. <laughs> you sent your word and heal my disease. Now, are they out all? Well, out of all of them here, I just need two people. There are just two people God wants to pray for. God wants me to pray for. So let's find them out now. All of you lift your hands. Close your eyes. Father, I don't know who you want me to minister to. But you said seven. Alright, there are three now. And out of these three, there will be that which was born on the seventh day. And there will be another one that is born on the seventh month. Ushers, please, please, I beg you, be sensitive. When there are three, tell me. I've not even prayed, though. All right, the rest of you can go back. Those are the three people. Stand here, please, stand here. I need to minister now. Are they three? Where are they? What? There are four. Don't worry, just leave her. Just, just guide her well. Okay, should I wait for them to stand up? Okay, let me pray for them. Father, I'm stretching my hands on them. And I declare that the right hand of your power will descend on them. Whatever does not look like you or represent your glory in their life, leaves them now by your mighty power i'm hearing a shout from one of them now in the spirit realm I hear, i'm hearing a shout so that will happen very physically now father let the weight of the enemy be removed be lifted and as they rise up they are rising up free destinies are activated now holy ghost touch them now I had a shout in the congregation just now. Within the space of a minute, there's going to be a shout in the congregation now. When it happens, I'll pray for the sick. Thank you, Father. You sent your word and he. I need it soft now. You are the Lord. In a few seconds. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a wild wind moving. There's going to be a shout in a few seconds. And when that happens, I will pray for the sick. You are the Lord. That he led me. You are the Lord. My healer. That was one, but I'm still hearing another one. You sent your word. Just help me. <laughs> and you. Bring it. You are the Lord. Sir, if you can, hold my hand with your two hands. 
you sent your word and you pray for the sick now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority against activity, uh, 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 infirmity, rather. I take authority against sickness. My God, wait. Uh -huh. I, I take authority against oppression of any kind in the bodies of your people. Every spirit of infirmity, the Lord rebuke you now. I charge thee to leave God's people now. Those are the spirits of oppression. Leave God's people now. Leave God's people now. Leave God's people now. There's somebody that will come under the anointing for your own is deliverance. Because I'm seeing chains being broken and I'm seeing somebody moving very vigorously like a snake. The power of God will find somebody while I'm ministering. The power of God will find somebody. I'm seeing that person being set free. It will be so mighty on you, you will not be able to stand because I'm seeing you on the ground. Close eyes everywhere, please very sensitive Lord who is that one person undo the heavy bodies break the chains break the chains I cross that spirit now I cross that spirit now I cross that spirit now touch Holy Ghost now when you see that person you will see the person moving vigorously like a snake Bring the person. I need to pray for the person. And there, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare healing to your people. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I declare healing. I declare healing. I declare healing. I declare healing. Every condition with the head, I command you to go now. Every brain condition dies now. Every heart condition is healed now. Every eye condition lives by the power of God now. Every bone and muscle condition by the life and the power of God, I command healing now. I command healing now. I see the Lord touching people on their joints. I see joints, problems with joints. Right now, the Lord heals you now, 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 now. The Lord heals you. When you get that person, bring that person. Fibroid, I curse you by the power of God. Leave God's people now. Leave God's people now. Any kind of growth that has inflicted your body, as I speak now, let those growths melt by the power of God. By the fire of God, let those growths melt now. Melt now. Melt now. I'm seeing the growth around the breast of a lady. One of your breasts. Pardon me. One of your breasts. I'm seeing growth. And it's melting right now as I'm talking. You are feeling something. You are feeling something right now as I'm talking. It is melting now. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Every kidney condition is over now. Every kidney condition ends now. I speak over every organ in your body. Hear the word of the Lord. Let the life of God come into you right now. Let the life of God come into you right now. I'm seeing somebody having problems with breathing. Breathing. You're having problems with breathing. Breathing. Breathing like your breath ceases sometimes. I command stability and perfection right now in the name of Jesus. And any infirmity of any kind that I did not mention, right now the Lord heals you completely. 
The Lord heals you completely. The Lord heals you completely. The Lord heals you completely. In the name of Jesus. It is done. Now I want you to do this. Listen to me. While I'll be singing. I want you to do this. Don't look at me. Do this. Check your body. Did you hear me? Check your body. Don't just stand and look at me. Whatever the infirmity or the affliction was, check. If it has, if it has gone, please run out right now. We want to take two, three testimonies before we are gone. So that God can, on the strength of those testimonies, perfect the rest of the others. Check your body. Whether it was a pain, an infirmity. In fact, you will not believe what I'm about to tell you. There are people with problems with their, li their limbs. One limb is shorter than the other. As I'm singing right now, it's coming back. It's coming into alignment. One limb is shorter than the other. Check very well. It's coming back into alignment. You sent your word. And here. Come, bring her. Look at me. Look at me. Just look at my eyes. Look at me. Something is coming into you now. Something happens, and now I know. Check yourself if you have been healed. Please rush out very quickly. Be bold about it. Let's hear your testimony and seal the healing. Just this way to the right. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. My God, thank you for your power. There are two letters, D A in your name. D A in your name. There are two letters in your name. D A. Probably towards the ending. A lady, come. And name. I know there be many people, but the name I'm seeing, the D A is towards the end of your name. Something happened. And now. Was that the person? Was that the person? She was the one? Wait. Don't worry, we'll deal with that. See, I'm going to pray. There are, there are still people with this oppression. I will pray the last prayer. And God will fish them out. But we will do a kind of deliverance now. D-A. Possibly towards the end of your name. What's your name? Where's the mic, please? Huh? What's your name there? My name is Lydia. Huh? Lydia. 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 What's your name? Rhoda. Okay, Rhoda. And? Kudra. Huh? Kudra. Kudra. Yes. That's a native name, right? Yes. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Your first time here? Second time. Your second time? Yes, sir. Okay, come. I'll pray for you. Just hold this hand. That's it. That's it. Help her. Huh? You too? 
What's your name? Saadat. Eh? Saadat. Saadat. I need to pray for you. Come. Come. No, just stand. Just stand. Leave. Put your hands down. I'll pray for you. Put your hands down. I'll pray for you. Your first time? You've been coming, right? Do you come expecting something? Yes, sir. I'll pray for you. I'm, I'm going to pray in the area of finance. Okay? Finance. Yes, sir. Family. Relationship. You are not married. Are you married? No, sir. You're not married. Yes. Finance, family, relationship. I'm coming. Let's deal with this stuff. Please, just um, bring her in a way. I want, to, I want to do something. Bring her front a little. Gently. Just a little bit forward. Uh-huh. Just bring her. Watch what will happen. I'm going to walk around. No, 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 no. I, I, uh, hey. Please, careful. Demons are not good. Amen? I'm going to walk around her seven times. And when I'm done, she'll be completely delivered. Okay. Now, peace be still. Shh. 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 Father, as I walk around her seven times, perfect whatever you will do. In the name of Jesus. Don't worry. When I'm done. When I'm done. Forget about what you are seeing. When I'm done. One. Two. Three. ministry inside of her that must be losing. Six. Father, thank you. Thank you. Seven. filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time. Be careful. Put, put your leg here so that she doesn't... Please tell me, God, receive it. I am finished. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you will not know what just happened now. Two things happened there. All right. Come, my dear, let me pray. Did I, I pray for you, dear? It's all right. You, you, God is going to visit you. All right? 
between now and April. God is going to visit you. Between now and April. Amen. Now, when is your birth month? September. September. Yes, sir. God is going to visit you between now and April. Amen. That will give you a cause to celebrate in September. Amen. Okay? Amen. It's done. God bless you. Amen. It's well. Okay, let me just pray with you people randomly. I think I know who I'm supposed to pray for. What's your name again? Lydia. Lydia? Yes. All right. Hold my hand. Are you a student? Yes, sir. The fire of God comes on you now. And every gift that is in you come alive now. In the name of Jesus. Let me teach you how to receive. Let me teach you how to receive, okay? Look at, look at me. Just receive. You understand? Don't cloud your mind. Just receive. Do you understand? Okay. Because I can sense when something is blocking the flow of the anointing. Now hold my hand with your two hands. Okay? Close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to breathe three times, okay? Number one, breathe in and out. Two, third time now. Sometimes some things can block the anointing from flowing. Sometimes it's in their mind. Sometimes it's other things. People don't know how to receive. Come, let me bless you. Father, visit her. Listen to me. Hold my hand with your two hands. Father, visit her. Father, visit her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, visit her. <laughs> in, a, in a month and two months from now, I see you smiling. I would have said it, but some of you will know what I'm talking about. But let it be according to your heart desire. In the name of the supreme Lord Jesus Christ, who died and rose from the dead. In Jesus' name. Where are those who were healed? Huh? Two? Okay, bring them. Let's hear their testimonies. I'll pray for you. I told you where it's done, my dear, you can go. God bless you. I'll, I'll pray for you. Those three areas, okay? And just remind me so I don't forget. Amen. Can we do this and we are done for the night? Is that okay? Is that okay? All right, let's hear them. All right, it's, uh, it's just one person. Okay, you could sit down briefly. You could sit down, except those who are under the anointing. Okay. His name is Maxwell. Max, yes. Yeah, he came in. He was okay, quite all right. But um, his mom, he's standing in for his mom for when his you were mom. praying. Oh, okay. When you were praying. She had a waist pain. Waist pain. Yeah. So he made Is there stand. anybody around here that has a waist pain? Come. You too, ma? Come. Okay, stand. Just stand there. Stand. Stand on your seat. Stand there. Put your right hand on your waist, two of you. As soon as you said waist pain, I had a signal that there are people here. Look at me, the two of you. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. No more waist pain. In Jesus' name. Father, touch them right now. I rebuke that infirmity. Let the pain go. I thought you were looking as you were standing behind her. Amen. When they are done from the anointing, they'll get up. It's gone. In fact, this I saw this woman. I saw I saw a creature sitting on her waist. This waist pain. Come, madam. Come. When the other one gets herself, she should check. But come. This is your waist pain, ma. Is this your first time? This waist pain has been long. I'm seeing something that has spanned for years. Okay, it will come and go. Then sometimes it's intense on you. You can't bend for long. I can't stand you for can't long. You can't stand for long too. Oh, that's I can't good. Can't stand for long. For how long? 
How many, long have many years. Many years. I can't stand like this for long. I'm seeing I that better go up and down. Up and down. To start. Right from when you were a younger girl, that's what I'm seeing. Then it became intense when you got. Are you married? Are you married, man? My daughter. Oh, your daughter. Yes. Oh, your family is going to be visited this night. But it's over now. Oh, she's still drunk under the anointing. I rebuke that spirit. I saw a demon. I saw a creature sitting on the waist. Okay, two people in the congregation. While I said I saw, they said in their mind, how does he see it? Those two people, the spirit of discernment will come upon you now. Your eyes will be... Shh, shh. It will come upon them mightily now. Those two people, I stretch my hands, receive that gift now. Now I'm hearing a shout, and then in 20 seconds, it's coming on you. Those two people, the gift of discernment, check her. It's not just to go back and sit down. There was a sickness. Check. If it's done, let's get the testimony. Yes, so what, what happened to his mom? So while he was standing, uh, he felt the same waist pain okay. instantly. But while you still ministered, while the prayer was going on, the pain left, left. him. So and he believed that his, his mother has been healed. Has been healed. Do you, is there credit? Can you call her? You called her? Yes, sir. What did she say? She said, it's, it's not like before anymore. It's not like before? Yeah. Come on, come on. Give God a big hand of praise. Distance is not a barrier. God can visit you here and as a point of contact, he's visiting your family. Amen. Check this two um, ladies. Let's know. Yes, the next testimony. That's us. Okay, that's him. That's him. All right. Is that something like Victoria? Victoria. Victoria. Okay, you. Hold on. Is there any other person like that? Victoria. Victoria. Come, madam. All right. So, how about her? Yeah, she just, I said she should do what she cannot do before. So, All right. can you do what okay, you do? Okay, do what do you before? couldn't do, ma. You couldn't bend like this. Flex like this. <laughs> Come. You are surprised. I mean, one moment is there and the next is gone. When I was praying for you, what did you feel? She's still drunk. It's all right. That's what the power of God does. It overwhelms. Madam, come. Let's hear your testimony. Says so she's okay. She's, she's feeling okay. better. You are feeling better, man. Now. So, okay. Okay. Let's see you bend, man. Let's see you bend. Stretch. This has been for many years. And you are sure it is gone now? Yes, because I, I don't care. <laughs> God bless you, ma. What's your name, ma? Hajara Bala. Huh? Hajara Bala. Ajala. Hajara. Angela. Hajara. 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 Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Please come and let me pray for you. God will perfect it. In the name of Jesus. And there's a gift in you that will come alive now. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfection by the anointing. Let every gift deposited in you come alive now. In the name of Jesus. I see a seer anointing on her life. My dear. How are you now? You're fine? You're crying. God is awesome, right? God is wonderful. Yes. Come. Hold my hand. Father. Perfect it. And give her peace. There's somebody in the congregation. You hardly sleep in the night. But God is healing you. You hardly sleep. Wherever you are, the hand of God finds you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you too, Victoria. Okay, two of you come. Let me pray for you. I'll do this and then we'll pray and go. Is that okay? I 
Okay. There's somebody probably close to me here. I had August. August. Huh? You were born in the month of August. All right, I'll talk. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I just had August. Now you see, that's how that's how it works. You have to be very calm, very still to hear God. I'm going to pray after this. I'm going to pray for impartations because there are some of you that your gifting must come alive today. Today, August come. For thou has turned my morning into dancing. Thou has taken away my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory will sing praise to you. That's your word. God is turning everything around and is bringing you to a season of joy and testimony. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be so for this life. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's done. God bless you. You come. Let me just touch you. God bless her. In the name of Jesus. I said I will talk to you. When peace like a river I attended When sorrows like I'm prophesying to some people. Whatever I love. your mom right what position are you in the family what child what number fourth fourth okay all right now i see the lord ending what seems like disappointments look at me my dear i see the lord ending what looks like disappointment do you understand disappointments that's what i see i see god bringing an end to disappointment I said I will talk to you about three things. Your finances, your family, and your relationship. Okay? Now, I see you standing in front of a door that was shut. And I see another door beside you open. But you are standing before the door that was shut. And God is saying, where you are looking to, for help or for succor. That's not where it will come from. Because he's opening another door for you. And I see that happening in the area of relationship. That's one. In your finances, I see God turning a lot of things around. Do you work? You don't work? What 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 do you do? School. Eh? I'm still in school. You're still in school. I see God doing something mighty in your life. Now watch this. This daughter of yours, huh? There's an anointing of finance on her life. And from what I see in the coming future, she may look to be more wealthy than the others. Hear what I said? Now, this is your prayer sometimes. Okay? That God should bless you. God should bless you because I see you have people at heart. I see you have people at heart. All right? You are the type that can do for people, give for people, and all of that. And you have been praying this prayer that God should bless you. As a matter of fact, I see something in your heart forming. Like an organization that you want to start. You have the intention to start an organization. Is that true? Something that I, it, I, it looks like it will be for the help of people. Do you understand what yes. I'm saying? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Now that dream, God placed it in you. And God is going to activate it. As you are coming out of school, I see a door opening for you in the job market. Okay? I see her coming into wealth in a very short time. Okay? Now, I spoke to you about your relationship. 
I said I'll talk about relationship. Were you in a relationship before now? I was supposed to get married on the 21st of November. Uh, come again, sir? I was supposed to get married on the 21st of November. But it's, all, it's all right. She was supposed to get married where? No, in November. Something happened. Huh? On her wedding day, it's okay, my dear. On her wedding day. On her wedding day, something happened. But well, God says, cheer up. Actually, God saved you from a disaster in the future. God saved you. It looked like a disgrace. It looked like a reproach. But God saved you. Now, I'm not praying bad. But go and watch that man. There are two things I'm seeing that will happen. And one of which is, I'm seeing him expire in a short time. You know what I mean by expire? Uh -huh. And I pray that doesn't happen. Otherwise, that would have been what God was saving you from. Alright? But I see another man walking into your life. Before this year is over. Amen. And the wedding preparation will be faster than the last one. Amen. Thus say the Lord. Father, hold my hand. Reproach is over. Jesus, I saw <laughs> bring her up again. God. No, 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 this must go. I saw a black cloth. Hold my hand. That devil lives your life. That devil goes now. In the name of Jesus. It's over, my dear cherub. Hmm? Wipe your tears. God is going to visit you this year and establish you. Eh? It's all over. Are you happy? Come on, celebrate God for that. That's awesome. Now please, can you stand? Can you stand? We are already out of time, but we need to just go. If I want to minister like this, we can stay here till midnight. But we have to go, okay? But every case that was called out here, anyone that is connected to such kind of cases, God is visiting you this night. Here, look at what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing some of you in the dream of the night, this night, I see a stranger visiting you in a dream. And that will be the perfection of deliverances. That will be the perfection of open doors. That will be the perfection of restorations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please lift your hands. Father, thank you for all you have done tonight. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Anyone here that has been under any form of oppression or reproach, right now the hand of God brings deliverance to them. I said the hand of God brings deliverance to them. The hand of God brings deliverance to them. Everyone that has been under any spell of witchcraft. Now watch, I see the power of God coming on some people now. Every spell, every enchantment of witchcraft. Anyone that has been trapped. Anyone whose soul has been engulfed by the power of the occult. As I count to seven, the hand of the Lord sets them free now. I see the hand of God coming on some people. Please, eyes closed everywhere. As I count to seven, the hand of God set them free now. Let the embargo of witchcraft be lifted. Let the embargo of witchcraft be lifted. One. Two. Three. Four. That's it. Five. Six. That's it. Seven. Total deliverance and restoration. In the name of Jesus. I want to prophesy over your life. Listen to this. The Lord asked me to declare this. This is the first prophecy for tonight. I'm decreeing and declaring upon everyone that will shout a loud amen. I declare by the hand of God. Ah! And I'm seeing as I'm declaring this one, the hand of God is coming on some people. I declare by the hand of God, speed comes into your life now. Speed. 
that's it, that's it, that's the anointing. Speak. 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 The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he gathered his loins and had drowned the chariots of Elijah Eli, of Ahab. Whatever has been delayed in your life by the hand of God, experience supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare in the next 21 days, let the rain of favor descend upon everyone here. Favor that activates promotion, deliverance, acceleration, breakthrough. Whatever needs to be done in your life in the next 21 days from now, I declare a rain of favor comes upon you now. In Jesus' name. Father, I decree and declare that whatever has been stolen from their life is restored. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now while we all stand, I do this and we are done. If you know you are here, you have heard the word, you have seen the power of God, you have had a wonderful experience, but you know you are not born again. I was waiting for this time. You know your ways are not right with God or your heart is not with God. You just come to church probably. All standing please. All standing. It is time for you to make a decision for Jesus. Or probably you are here, you used to be born again, some things happened, and then you have derailed. You don't know where you are from God. I want to give you an opportunity. This is the greatest restoration that can happen to you. Wherever you are, with our eyes closed, lift your right hand. I want to pray with you briefly before we are done with the meeting tonight. You need to say yes to Jesus. With all eyes closed everywhere, lift your right hand. Or you are coming back again. You used to be, but you veered off. You derailed. Today may be the only day you have. The Bible says today, while you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. I tell you, Jesus is coming back soon. And that only those whose names are in the book of life will be with the master. You need to say yes. Make a decision for Jesus. Raise your right hand to the heaven. I want to pray for you. God bless you. I see hands up already. Some of you are thinking about it. Join them. Now those of you that your right hand is up, I want you to walk very quickly to the front. I want to pray for you personally. Very, very quickly. Take a bold step of faith. Take a bold step of faith. Very quickly. Very quickly. God bless you. I see people coming from the back. God bless you. Can we celebrate God for this? I see people coming. Win the war this evening. Win the war. My God, what a harvest of souls. You need to see the people coming. Win the war over your soul. Win the war over your life now. Say yes to Jesus. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus delivers. Only Jesus set free. There are spaces here. You can bring them here. Now please stretch your hands towards them. I want to pray for them. Those of you in front, please, you can stay, stand here. Yeah. Those of you in front, I'm going to lead you to a prayer. I want you to mean it from your heart. Forget about whatever has happened. Okay? It's a decision between you and God. You are standing before Jesus right now and his arms are open to accept you. And I want you to say this with every faith inside of you and believe that it is done. Please help that young lady. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I repent of my shortcomings. I say no to the world. I say no to Satan. And I decree and declare by faith that from today I am your child in Jesus' name. Father, I declare upon these ones right now their sins are forgiven and they receive eternal life in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the Spirit of God seal you with His salvation. I decree and declare from today you rule over sin. You rule over sickness. You rule over the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Welcome into the kingdom. And from today you walk in victory. Your life is never the same. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 
If you've been blessed or inspired by this message, you can connect with us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel at Sons of Glory Network International. You can also reach us through the number 070-5581-5757. God bless you. Passion.